631110M. Souls that are in prison now. Jeffersonville, Indiana, USA. Thank you. Let us bow our heads for just a moment. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to Thee today for this privilege of assembling together one more time, knowing that someday we will assemble for our last time <coughs> as mortals, and then we will assemble in a glorified estate with Thee, and all the redeemed of all the ages shall be assembled there. Oh, our hearts beat high of and of great anticipation waiting for the hour to arrive. With that, all fears vanish from us. We have nothing to fear, nothing to dread. We look forward to the promise that the eternal God has made us and we know that it's truth. That is why we live, we live for that, that hour, that time when this mortal shall, will be changed and will be made like him. And there will be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more heartaches. Oh, it will be all be over then. And with joy of heart, we in faith and courage, we look forward for that day. That's why we are gathered here today, Lord, to confess our wrongs and ask for mercy. That's why we face this altar this morning, because that we know we are mortal and there is many mistakes in us and we are full of fault. But we come to confess our wrongs and then look to our Heavenly Father with open hearts for the blessings and renewal of strength and faith that He would give us in this hour as we have assembled here according to the promise in heavenly places in Christ Jesus for we claim that we have passed from death unto life by His promise and we are caught up in a heavenly atmosphere sitting with Him now. May He teach us this morning the things that He would have us to know and give us the bread of life that we might be sustained for the future that lays before us. Grant it, Lord. This is our prayer that we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May be seated. Good morning to everyone. It's very good to be assembled here with you again this morning in this heavenly atmosphere worship. Just a tiny bit late. We had uh, some real, real bad calls just a few minutes ago. A boy laying there dying. And just as sure as I'm standing here, the Lord touched his body and sent him on his road. So, and a boy standing here, which is my cousin's son, they were really Catholic to begin with, but they went to Mass this morning and something told them to come here. And so they, there's a change. So they are, they are coming now at the house and prepare for water baptism. So there they are, just wonderful thing that the Lord does all the time. They're just constantly doing things. They come to get in and they couldn't get in. They said they just know where to get in. I said, well, you want to talk to me? And I said, well, just come on up to the house and we'll talk over there. So I thought on my road to New York now for this meeting coming up and they, um, that is it would be nice, uh, just be so nice. I know I'd be refreshed to drop in and help light my fire from what fire you all had. And we stopped for a day this morning and we got in yesterday, day before yesterday at noon. And then we got to leave. I was going to leave this afternoon, but I think I'll go. And we sat in the morning early, real early, or we might have some of the roads and things between here and New York. Got to go through Virginia, through the mountains, and also through the Alleghenies, and just in the bottom part then of the Adenor Duck. So we begin at I forget in the arena there, um, a new one. They tore the old St. Nicholas Arena down and stand. they built this new one. As far as I know, we are getting about some of the first nights that ever that's been let out. We're so grateful for that, for the greater New York Pentecostal people. And I think we got several churches cooperating and expecting a great time. And we look back, the Lord willing, sometime next week. And if it be the will of God, why we hope, to get to stop over for Sunday a week for the Sunday morning service and then I budged last right in our pastor again as always do you see and I thought maybe if I got in and even without asking and then being there is a nice group here and people I see from out of town are here so I thought maybe tonight if the pastor hasn't got anything special that it would be we have a little service tonight, just a short one, and we'll uh, maybe pray for the sick, which is amen. Thank you.
we are hoping to pray for the sick tonight talk on divine healing and pray for the sick start early so you can get out early and if the pastor will what he usually start at 7 30 is that right about starting at 7 tonight whenever says amen and let me get on at 7 30 and that will let me out by 8 or 8 30 and it gives people time to go if that's all right everybody laughed when i said 8 or 8 30 i hope to be out at that time pray for the sick you know we never know so we have had a great time since leaving you in the last fall earlier the lord had blessed us in many good things that and tonight is the lord willing i want to tell you on last visitation i had from god in colorado a few weeks ago and that's what i thought i'd bring you now maybe stimulate faith for good healing service tonight for the sick and the afflicted now this morning to get right into the service i something struck my heart about a month ago and it might be now i think they are are they chipping this are they chipping this here all right so that i would know where if the tape gets out to others i can't see that what i'm going to speak on this morning i can see that um it is i know it's right see the message part of there will be right but the thing that i want to do is a question in my mind it looks so real and yet since i come in and since it was really revealed to me i've had uh, been so scared that i'll be wrong thing and might leave the wrong impression on people and it's a uh, and i when i had notes wrote down or what i was going to say i cut part of it out so that i might not make it too strong because you see if a person i love the lord god and the only way i know i love him is because i love you see that's the only way that i know and yet i don't want to have anything that revealed to me and then not tell you if um, it's to tell you and then i'm afraid that if i do say something a little too strong it may hurt somebody and you know it's a you just have to almost get to the platform and then feel led to see what you're going to see that's all and then sometimes you might say something and someone would get another slant to it and then run off on that side and then somebody would say oh this is this thing but i want you to know that what i'm going to see is pre just presuming and the word presume is to venture without authority so i am don't say this is true but it's just a little thought that i will drop along to you and you might weigh it out and see what you think about it and then i'll it of course it will be scriptural because um, i wouldn't preach nothing so but uh is that the hour yet as right to this hour and these things meant that i pray that with all that is within me that it isn't seen i pray that it isn't right that it isn't that hour is going to be but it has to come to that time yet see that's what i wonder now everybody understands thoroughly that i don't know i just uh is it this time if it is god be merciful to us but if it is that time let's um it's going to come now as soon as we can get to a great itinerary in front of us a lot willing and i've got to go overseas right after christmas in europe and asia europe especially and then i come back to the united states for a few services and then i go back down into south africa I begin on the 2nd of September in Durban and go from the 2nd, I think, about uh, the 10th. And then I have three days to go from there to Johannesburg and begin again. And I think it's the month of April. We start in the Scandinavian countries in Norway and Sweden and Finland and Holland and Switzerland and Germany and through Europe there. So, be in prayer for us. There are a few meetings here. Christmas time now, right after Christmas, by the way we want to be here through Christmas home. The kids want to come home through Christmas and we love Arizona, but you know the thing that we miss and just can't get over it is this church and the people, no matter where we go, what we do is just kids, me and wife and all, there's just no place like this. That's right, there's just no place. I've sailed the seven seas and I've everywhere but there is no place that seems hallowed to me like this little spot right here this is it just get away from it once if you want to know there's just something special here 
something about here i preach about the world practically and i've never any time any place ever felt the spirit of god with freeness and things like i do standing right here this is it god let it as a day that i laid the cornerstone over there i said lord god don't let it fall people said it'll be a garage uh, it'll be in two months it'll be a garage i said don't let it fall lord let it be standing and people in here praising you when jesus returns i trust it that it'll be that way let us turn in the bible now and expect the lord to give us of his blessings i want to know to uh, read some scriptures i got some scriptures wrote down here that i want to refer to and some notes and i want to read out of the three places of the bible and i'll give them to you first i want to read in jude 5 and 6 jude is just one book you know and then i want to read second peter the second chapter 4 and 5 then i want to read first peter 3 18 to 20. And my subject this morning, the Lord willing, is souls that are in prison now. Aha, uh -huh, souls that are in prison now. Shut up, forever condemned, never been, no way of being saved. The see, souls that are in prison now. Now let's uh, read over in the book of Jude first. I believe I marked down here for the first place in Jude and then over in Second Peter and then over in First Peter. Now Jude, I'd like to read it all. And just to save time because it's at 10 30 already i'm going to begin with the fifth verse now jude was a brother foster brother of jesus christ as we all know see he was just son i will therefore put you in remembrance remembrance through you once knew this how that the lord having saved the people out of the land of egypt afterwards he destroyed them that believed not saved them first brought them out of egypt and then had to destroy them because they didn't continue with their message you see and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he has resolved in everlasting chains and the darkness and the judgment of the great day angels which were once still in heaven and kept not their estate and the way that they were in fell away and now is in eternal chains of darkness everlasting chains of darkness kept in this condition until the judgment of the day when they'll be judged with all the rest of their unbelievers. Now, in Second Peter, second chapter, beginning with the fourth verse, which will be uh, just a book or two behind it, see. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them into hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, Spared not the angels, put them in chains of darkness, and condemned the whole world by the destruction of Noah. Now, in First Peter, the first chapter, the first Peter, the third chapter, and beginning with the eighteenth verse, we read again. Now, listen close now. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but weakened by the Spirit. Put to death in the flesh, but weakened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison he preached to these people in prison which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of god waited in the days of noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water like figure here unto even baptism does also now save us not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answering of a good conscience towards god by the resurrection of jesus christ who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of god angels and authorities and powers made known subject unto him let us pray again the heavenly father such a line of scripture here three witnesses three places in the scripture giving testimony and thou hast said in thy word that in the mouth of two or three witnesses let everybody be established now i pray thee O god that thou will come to the people and will interpret this word this message in the light that it should be in that every man woman boy or girl might understand in the capacity that you have ordained for them to understand in and now knowing that these three witnesses be a record of truth and i pray that you will send the holy spirit upon us now and we look to him who's our king in our midst this morning the lord jesus christ where we have raised now by faith sitting in his heavenly places in him we wait for his message speak it through us lord 
hear it through us as we ask you to circumcise the lips that speaks in the ears that hear that it might be to the glory honor and glory of him who is the scripture for us in his name amen now remember the services tonight a healing service i don't think it will be necessary to give out uh, prayer cards so we just pray for the sick i have something that i want to tell you and i hope that it will just bring the congregation into a place till we where there'll just be all kinds of healing. I know it'll be if you'll just believe it that way. Now, these souls now in prison, souls that are in prison, now in prison. Now, the soul of a man is not the body of a man. It's a soul. See, the soul is something that's the nature of the spirit. And then when the nature of a man, when he said we are dead, the scripture clearly tells us that we are dead and our lives are hid, and God through Christ sealed by there by the Holy Spirit. Now it wasn't that your body died, it wasn't your spirit died, it was the nature of your spirit died. See the nature which is a soul, the nature of your soul is God. If you're born again, if it's not, it's of the world. Anything that begin has to end. So therefore, the only way that you can have eternal life is to have a life that never did begin, and then your life did begin when you were born. When God breathed the breath of life into your nostrils and you became a living soul, then you begin then. But when you, that nature that was in you by nature, you was of the world, alienated from God, you're actually an animal. That's right. Anyone knows that we are mammal. How many knows that we are mammal? We are one blooded animal. But that is what we are by our earthly creation. But you see what made us different from other mammals that god put a soul upon us in now the other mammals don't have to wear clothes no other animal has to wear clothes to hide his shame but us we're the only ones that does because we have a soul but see god in the beginning knew what a man would be like and he created the earth and brought up all kinds of animals from the very lowest to the highest and the highest animal come forth was man and then first man was made he was a spirit man in the image of god which god is a spirit Saint john 4 now he is a spirit and they that worship him worship him in spirit and in truth and thy word is the truth now we worship him in spirit and truth he is a spirit being and then there was no man to till the soil and then god formed man out of the dust of the earth then he taken from his side a byproduct, a rib, and from that separated the, this man, which had a dual nature, which was both feminish and masculine, and he taken the feminish out, because it was love, and he placed into in it to a person called Eve, that Adam called Eve, which was his wife, that's where his love, a natural free love held to his wife, that's the way a man should be today, and her back to her husband, the man, the masculine, the woman, the feminist. And then, see, after he done, ma made man in his own image, created he them male and female, there was no man to till the soil. And he put him in the dust of the earth, and therefore he became, he was that man. This human man was mammal, see, he was animal, but he put his spirit of God alive into him and made him on the basis that he could make a choice. And then, when this man, now we think we are something, just remember what we are, a cloud of dirt, that's all. And because dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. So when you see this man walking down the streets, thinks he is somebody, you know, and got a real education and things, you remember it's a cloud of being in a dust. That's all. And that woman that's all dressed in shorts and smoking cigarettes and carrying on down the street, twisting like the, she owned the whole country, is a cloud of Indian dust. And that's the way it's turning back. So, you're not very much to begin with, seeing. So, that's right there. So, what you are, but that soul that's in there, see, that soul is what God is working on, see. If he can only get that nature to that spirit to agree with him, then that nature dies, and the nature of 
the love of the world dies and the things of the world is dead, you see. Because if you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God is not in you, you see. And a man must be born again. So this nature has to die and the nature of God comes in and lives in you. And God's only thing that there is that never did begin or never can end. So therefore he has partnership, you see, and taken this man earthly and this eternal spirit and put together because God reflected himself back in that, that he became a man when he became Christ, Jesus, he, and he was God, see, God was in Christ, that, see, lived in him, reconciling the world to himself, and through that perfect man, each one of us imperfect can believe in God, and has accepted that because the perfection of him, and he never left his body, see, corruption neither, did he leave his soul in hell, but raise him up on the third day, and he's alive forevermore, and we will have a body like his own glorious body. That's why we are baptized into his name, that he might come forth in his name, in his death, in his resurrection, that we rise again, testifying to the world that we have new life, that the old man is dead, we are buried, that first nature, see, the first nature is gone, and now we are the nature of him, he lives in us, and we don't do our own will, we do his will, we don't think our own thoughts, the mind, the mind is what thinks the mind that was in christ jesus is in every believer see there is a soul and that's what we are speaking of now that's the part that i'm thinking of now that that's within us the soul now if we notice in this there's many things that happen sometime and we wonder why they happen and we question ourselves and we question others but finally after a while we find out that if we are Christians, it all works out just right. Somehow, we have seen that. All Christians see that. We wonder why we did it. I wondered sometime when I first read the Bible, that's why God let Abraham, that great man, ever stand there and see that Sarah wasn't his wife. And how that he let him stand there and lie about that and the things that he did. And then how that he never let Abraham leave the promised land. But he told him not to leave. Any Jew that leaves the promised land is backslid. Because God gave that to them and promised them to stay there, see? And they left it. So he went down to Gera. But if it didn't hadn't have been for that, and then Abimelech the king down there in the Christian country, fell in love with Sarah and was going to marry her, and was a good man, a righteous man. And after her, you probably this sounds ridiculous, but it's uh, to make it so real to you after he had his evening bath and put on his pajamas and said his prayers went to bed and the lord appeared to him and said you are just as good as a dead man and the man had done nothing see he was absolutely deceived by both abraham and sarah that's right he said you have got another um, man's wife see and i won't hear you your prayers no matter how much you pray you are as good as a dead man but that is my prophet see see it's hard to understand that see but if it wasn't that we wouldn't know what grace was why did he go and marry Hagar after having a lovely wife like sarah and he didn't want to do it see but sarah told him and then the lord told him you listen to what sarah told you why there had to be an ishmael that the bonds woman and her child would not be here with the free woman and her child see what i mean all these things are types why did that prophet have to marry a prostitute and have with his children have two children by her as a sign and why did one lay on his right side for 340 days and then laid so many days on the other side like that as a sign one stripped his clothes and walked uh, before israel and now all those things it was types and shadows see and we have to have those things to fill in and many times that things happen to us that we wonder why it is it's god for showing us something now as a little boy and you know my life story i always believed since i can remember one of the first things that i remember you know this now you might have told me something yesterday and i'd forget it by today but there are some things back that happened in our young days many of us that uh ways that we always remember and uh, this sounds almost ridiculous to say this, but I remember when I was crawling with a long dress on, little babies. Or some of you people my age would remember that 
baby used to wear are real long dresses and i remember crawling and dipping snow off of my uncle's feet and eating it when he came in and was standing in the by the fireplace and then the next thing i remember taking place in my life was a vision the first one i ever had and told me i would live in a big spot of my life in a city called New Albany and I was a little mountain baby up there, not even a doctor when I was born and I, you know, they've um, I've lived here around 50 years right here, a vision and then how I've always knew there was a God somewhere as a little boy he spoke to me, never to smoke or drink or defile my body that's around immoral with women and things I've always had a dread of it and was a young man and then I was out hunting one time which seems like uh, to be a second nature to me to love to hunt and I was out hunting with a boy Jim Pool a lovely kid I think his boy comes to church here little Jim and fine family of people I know the pools Jimmy and I slept together and lived together since we were little boys in school we are about six months apart in age and Jimmy let his gun go off and shot me through both legs real close to me the shotgun i was taken to the hospital and there laying there dying no penicillin or nothing in those days and now they had a rubber sheet under me and i know that night they was going to operate the next morning they just took and cleaned that off the wound and the big pieces of flesh blowed up and they took scissors and cut it off and i had to hold a man's hands and they had a fr frankie etch he just recently committed suicide and they had to hold pry my hands loose from his wrists when they got through i screamed and cried and holding on to like that and then cutting that part of the leg off i was 14 year, years old just a boy and that night i tried to go to sleep and there i woke up something splashed and here's a blood nearly half a gallon i guess and come from the veins and they had they taken the x-ray and they uh, said the shot was laying close, so close to the artery on the other side that just a little scratch would cut it right in two. And I'd start bleeding. Well, I thought this is the end of me. And I put my hands down like this and raised it up and the blood running down my hands. It was my own blood I was laying in. I called, rang the bell, the nurse came and she just soaked it up with a towel because there was nothing they could do. And the next morning, under those weakening conditions, they didn't give their blood transfusions in them days, you know. So they operated on me, and they gave me ether. And when I, the old ether, I guess you remember, is the old anesthetic, and under that ether, when I came out, I was coming out of ether after eight hours. They had uh, given me so much, they thought I couldn't, uh, I wouldn't wake up. They couldn't get me awake. I remember Mrs. Roder stood by me. Out in the hospital, I'll never forget that woman. No matter whatever happens, I could never forget her. And she was just a, a young woman then. Her husband was a spontaneous down here at the car works. And I remember she standing by me, her and Mrs. Stewart, and they was the one that actually that paid my husband's bill. I, we didn't even have food to eat in the house. So how could we pay the hospital bill? hundreds of dollars but she through uh, her church society and the Lucas clan paid the hospital bill for me masons i can never forget them see no matter what they do or what i still there is something that st stays with me see what they did for me and they paid the bill to dr Rida. he is still living lives here in port Fulton. could tell you the story when i came out from under the ether there was something happened to me there i've always believed it to be a vision cause i was so weak and i they thought i was dying she was crying when i opened my eyes could look i could hear her talking and then i went back to sleep and woke two or three times and then had a vision then and then i had about seven months later i had to go and have shotgun words and greasy hunting clothes taken out of my legs the doctor didn't get it and so i had blood poison both legs had swelled up and doubled back under me and they wanted to take both legs off at my hips and i just i said no 
just come higher and take it off up here. I could understand it, see? And so finally, the Dr. Ruda and Dr. Faro from Louisville performed the operation and cut down in there and taken it out. And today I got a wonderful legs by the grace of God. But under the last vision that I had, the first vision when I come to, and then I went into this trance and I thought I was in hell just as plain. My mother says, pardon me, sir. Uh huh. There's a woman over here that's passed out right here. All right, somebody lay hands on her and she'll probably get her to the air. However, who will be standing there? Lay hands on her. Let's pray, dear Lord Jesus, may our sister who is sick and this morning and she's fainted in the room. May thy grace and strength and power there is hands laid upon her now representing you. And the scripture has said, This signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And now may our sister come out of this sickness and be made well for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask it and commit her to you. Amen. Now let her get her to the air. It's awfully stuffy. I can feel it here real, real bad. It's uh, just a fainty feeling here on the platform. I felt it four or five times here. If there is, as soon as she gets her feeling a little better, why get her to where she can get to the air? That's good. Uh huh. See, it's just so awful stuff, you know. Human beings create each one of us so many square feet of this just sickness. If you have somebody that ever some water there or something to put on her sister, she's uh, too all right now. See, all right. Abba says, Let's uh, stop, still open the doors with a run home. Yeah, maybe uh, if you could open up the doors, maybe or just give a little bit of air as much as you possibly can in some way. See, now in this time, as I had this vision and thinking that I passed from this life into torment, and seven months later, here at the Clark County Memorial Hospital. I had a second operation and at that time when I come out I thought I was standing out in the west I had another vision and there was a great golden cross in the skies and the glory of the Lord flowing off that, that cross and I stood with my hands out like this I said glory and was falling into my chest and the vision left me my father was sitting there looking at me when the vision came I've always felt you all people that know me all these years knows I've wanted to go west. You know how it is? That's uh, always been something in the west. But because an astronomer told me one time, same thing, that I should go west. The stars, when they cross their cycles and so forth, I was born under that sign. And I'd never be accessed in the east. I'd have to go west. And last year I took off west to fulfill what a lifetime desire has been. See, to do it. Why I'm here. I'm there, it's the most ridiculous thing, setting out there with the desert, paying $110 a month, rent, and here's a house, setting up here, a personage, furnished to me, see, but it's following the Lord, see, that, how I usually know to do, and you know, the visions of what taking place out there now. In this, I want to say, now if her sister feels a little weak, Brother Roy and Sam, she'd want to get her somewhere and set her in a room over there where she gets more air or something. And that's perfectly right because I feel that she'll be all right now. It's okay. She just uh, fainted sick. And so I, I tell you, if she, if you want to bring her over here, by the air, raise these windows with the Roy. And if the sister wants to come through that that will be fine see if she wants to come over here well just don't fear that i want to lay hands on her when she passes by here if you'll excuse me just a minute and god forgive me for that's right brother heavenly father this your daughter here sits here this morning and she come to hear the message and god so Satan is trying to beat her from it, and he can't do it. He can't do it. Bless you, sister, in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Well, that door, I think, over in a few brethren, then the air can come through there to you. Oh, you talk about stuffy. 
if you are to get in one of those places overseas where they just pile in on top of one another with leprosy and cancer and oh my you can't hardly get your breath you know in things like that lead in them great big buildings that just contaminated with diseases and you know what leprosy would be they are laying with no ears and half the faces eat off and no arms and little pegs for feet and things like that laying piled on one another and many of them dying right there laying out there from piling on one another trying to get in somewhere you know to hear the message and now in this i tell you what happened in the vision that i had i'll go back because i brought that the two visions in to show you about one of them i was to be out west i've always longed for that and now the purpose of the message this morning is to put is to post the church in everything that he will let me post the church to as far as i know until the as I go along, and this truck struck me, so I wanted to post the church. Now this is to this tabernacle only, see, to here. Now, and in this vision, the first one, here is what you can please. After the vision struck me, and I was so weak, and I had lost all my blood, and went, I thought I was sinking into an endless eternity. Many of you has heard me tell this before, of the sinking into an endless eternity. First, I was going through the clouds and then through darkness and sinking on down 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 and the first thing you know i've got into the regions of the lost and in there i screamed and i looked and there everything there was no foundation to it i could never stop falling for eternity like look like i was going to fall there was no stopping nowhere and then what a difference it was from the vision i had here not long ago of being in glory with the people the contrast but in this i was falling i finally i screamed for my daddy because daddy just being a kid that's what i do i screamed for my daddy and my daddy wasn't there and i screamed for my mother somebody catch me there was no mother there i was just going and i screamed then to god there was no god there there was nothing there and after a while i had the most mournful sound that i ever had and it was the most awful feeling there's no way even a little burning fire would be a pleasure to the side of what it this was. Now those visions has never been wrong. It was just one of the most horrible feelings I ever had. And what did I heard a noise sounded like some kind of a haunted affair and when I looked coming it was women and had this green stuff just uh, see their face. There is a green stuff under the eyes, and the eyes look like run back. And the uh, women today paint their eyes, run back like that, and just the eyes and face. And they were going, Oh, 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 my. I screamed out, Oh, God, have mercy upon me. Have mercy, oh God, where are you? If you'll only let me go back and leave, I promise to be a good boy. Now, that's the only thing I could do. See, now God knows. And at the day of judgment, he'll judge me for that statement. That's what I said, Lord, God, let me go back and I promise you I'll be a good boy. And when I got short, I had to lie that and pretty near everything there was to be done. Only one thing that I say, I might as well just clean it out while I'm right here now. And when I looked down and see I was half blood in almost, I said, God, have mercy on me. You know, I never did admit adultery. There was the only thing I could say to God. I never accepted his pardon and all these things. I just could say I never did commit adultery. And then they taken me out there. And then in that, I cried, God, be merciful to me. I'll be a good boy if you'll only let me go back. For I knew there was a God somewhere and so help me. Those weary creatures all around I had just been a new arrival, and the most hideous, horrible, ungodly feeling in that looked like great big eyes, big eyelashes, out like that, and run back like a cat, like back like this, and good stuff like it had cancer or something. And they were going, oh, 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 what a feeling. Now, when I, then in a moment's time, I'd come back to life again, that thing. As bothered me, I thought, oh, let it be that I'll never go to a place like that. 
no other human being will ever have to go to a place like that. Seven months later, I had the vision of standing in the west and seeing that gold cross coming down upon me. And I knew that there was a region of the dam somewhere, and I never noticed it too until March, uh, about four weeks ago, the wife never thought of it in his terms about a four weeks ago. The wife and I went to Tucson to do some shopping. And while we were sitting, the wife we had went in downstairs and there's a bunch of sissy little boys had the hair that you know, like a woman does, and bangs come down here in front with these real high trousers, kind of I guess the beatniks, or whatever what you call them, and they were in there and everybody was looking at them and their heads was that big, like the women that wear this uh, water cut, head haircuts, you know. And they were down there. And a young woman came by and she said, What do you think about it? That I said, Then you ought to be ashamed of yourself. If you can think that, I said, He has just as much right to do it as you do. Neither one of you have a right. So I went upstairs and I sat down. And when I did, there's an escalator, was a JC Penistone. And the pressure bringing the people up, well, I really turned sick at my stomach, seeing those women come up there, young, old, and indifferent, wrinkled, young, and every way, with little bit of shorts on, their filthy body, and those sexy dressed women, and those great big hairs like that, and they come, and one coming right off of that escalator, just coming right up like that, when I was sitting back in a chair, sitting there with my head down, and I turned and looked, and one of them was coming up the steps was saying, Oh, Spanish speaking to another woman. She was a white woman speaking to a Spanish woman. And when I looked where the Branham snapped his fingers, all at once I was changed. There I had been seen that before. Her eyes, you know, how the women are doing now, painted the eyes, just recently like cut, you know, pulled it up like this and wearing cut glasses and everything, you know with your eyes up like this, and that green stuff under the eyes. There was that thing that I seen when I was a child. And there was a woman just exactly, and I just got numb all over, and I began to look around, and there was those people mumbling, you know, going on about the prices and things in the building. And I just looked like it. I would just change for a moment. And I looked and I thought, that's what I saw in hell. There there was that canker. I thought because they were in hell, what made them about that way, a greenish blue kank under their eyes, and here was this woman painted with greenish blue, just the way the vision said about 40 years ago. See, about 40 years ago, it's what it's been. I'm 54, I was 14, so about 40 years ago, I, that's the uh, number anyhow, or the judgment, you see, now there was... I had seen that and I couldn't even speak to my wife when she came. She was over here praying and get seven kids something, kind of a dress or something for school. And I couldn't even I couldn't even speak to her. She said, Bill, what's the matter with you? I said, Honey, I'm as I'm almost a dead man. And she said, What's the matter? Are you sick? I said, No. Something just happened. No. She don't know. What is waiting for this day to return? I never said it to nobody, and I thought I'd wait as I promised to bring it to the church first thing. Bring it to the church, that was my promise, and you'll realize after tonight the reason I tried to keep my promise here. I thought then as I noticed them conquered looking eyes on them women, and they were Spanish, and the French, and the Indian, and white, and all together, and that great big head, you know, bushed up with that comb, and how they come it back, you know way big and then comes out you know and uh you know how they do it fix it up like they did it and then the kanka looking eyes and the eyes with the paint they run back like a cat's eyes and then talking and where i was at again standing there in jesse penny store back in hell again 
I got so scared. I thought, Lord, surely I haven't died, and you let me come to this place after all. And they were making just around like that in that division, like you could barely hear it with your ears, you know, just a mumble and going on of people and them even coming up that escalator and walking around there like and that oh oh there was them green funny looking eyes and mournful and the wife come up and i said just let it alone a minute honey i said if i don't mind i want to go home and she said are you are you sick i said no just ahead honey if you got any shopping to do she said no i'm finished and I said, let me take you by the arm, see, and I walked out. She said, what's the matter? I said, Mida, something happened up there. And while I was under that, I thought this. What day we're living in? Could this be a third pool? Now, I've got some notes here. Jesus, we find out that Jesus in his ministry, after he had preached the people, that are going to be really scriptural on this. After Jesus had preached his ministry, and his ministry was rejected by the people. Now you read between the lines, draw your own conception. Remember what I told you at the first, after he had preached. And he came as a promised one for that day. We all know that the scriptures identify Jesus Christ as Messiah. That was right. Thoroughly confirmly dedicated by God and his word that he was Messiah. There was no question. If anybody eat, if you do, then he should come to the altar that he wasn't the messiah he was clearly identified as the messiah but after he clearly god identified him as peter said on the day of pentecost when he talked to the sanhedrin there at the four about four days later he said jesus of nazareth a man approved of god among you by signs and wonders which god did by him in the midst which we all are witnesses seeing you have took by and my wicked hands have crucified the prince of life, which God has raised up and shown forth these things that you see. Christ lived on, of course, still lives today. Now, after Jesus had come, came, identified himself, and God identified him, and he prophesied. And after the days of his prophecy, though scripturally identified, the people rejected him. That's right. And he preached then, after they rejected him, here, the ones that had a possibility of being saved. Remember, when he was preaching, there was a possibility of anybody being saved. And you know who they are? They are predestinated. But he continually preached. But after the days of his preaching, his ministry continued on. Because the last group he preached to was the soul that were in hell. That could not be forgiven. I have clearly read that from the Bible here. From Second Peter, see, he went and preached to the souls that were in prison, which is hell, locked up until the day of jud the judgment. Because you see, the judgment isn't now. And there is no... Uh, burning hell now, somebody tell me, the guy is in burning hell. Now, that's wrong, see. A judge of this earth is just enough to never condemn a man until he's brought to trial. And God will never throw a man into the fiery furnace until first he's condemned by God's own laws. He rejected mercy, so you see. He first has to have a trial, and the trial is a great white throne judgment. But now he's in a place called a prison house. And I saw the vision of both places, and by the grace of God, I see this not to be sacrilegious, and if it's wrong, God forgive me. I believe I've been in both places, see? in both places, and I seen the redeemed that are blessed, and I seen the lost, and where they were at, and that where I stand as your brother today to warn you to flee from that downward path don't you never go that road and you have got everything to live for that blessed upward way where the redeemed are in joy and peace and they can't sin they can't be sorry 
they can't there is nothing they are perfect seen both places i know that's an awful statement for a person to make but god's my judge i solemnly believe that i've seen both places i believe that and oh far be it from any person from entering that regions of the lost if you were standing with hot wires bored through you tormented in every way i'd be not like that devil torment there in that place there could be nothing could human mind couldn't the human mind can't comprehend what that regions of the lost is there is no way to explain it and there is no way to explain what the regions of the blessed is it's so great that's so horrible and it is so great is from the ridiculous to the sublime so if somebody hears me and i'm getting to be an old man i don't know how much longer i got i soon be 55 years old I don't know according to nature I may not have too many ears. I don't know where this tape will go, but let everyone hear here and on the tape wherever it may go. Don't never go towards that region of the lost. You can't picture hell being that bad. And whatever you do, don't you never get any forget this that the regions of the blessed I say this with Saint Paul, I has not seen, he has not heard or either could it enter the heart of man what god has for them and so that love him so stop if you're listening to this tape turn the machine off and repent if you've not conceived and get right with god i'm saying this by a first hand experience as i believe in my heart and as i see if these if the visions has deceived me god be merciful for me make a statement like that but with the sincerity in my heart knowing that not one of them visions ever failed I believe that I have been in both places, far beach from any human being, going that road downward. Now Jesus, after the, he had finished his ministry, preached to those souls that were unsavable, that could not ever be saved. And the Bible tells us that he went and preached to the souls that were in prison, that repented not. When mercy was given to them, they spurned mercy, and now they are waiting for the judgment. Oh, what a time! That must have been oh i wish there was somewhere i could shake the world with that to let them see what the reality is and jesus said himself as the father sent me so send I you and as the father sent him to preach to the living to those who had hope and then present the same message to those who had no hope it hopes to it seems so fitting at this time that that will have to be done cause the spirit of christ living in us does not change the nature of him or doesn't change god's system he must be the same in every generation he must be the same said as a father sent me so send are you the ministries must be the same in so much that he said i see some of you writing scriptures down saint john 14 12 he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also see the works preaching to the lost healing the sick and then to the impossible to ever get be saved see the work just went on just the same so this has been has has this been may i put it like this the ministry of jesus christ reincarnated in his church in this last day that's what many of us believe i believe with you i believe this i if i didn't believe it i'll do something else about it because after all this is me that's concerned in here and if the spirit of god be in you we are concerned about the people there was a scripture that always puzzled me how that moses could tell god a better idea than what god had till i found out that it was the spirit of christ in moses in god said to moses separate yourself from them i'll destroy the whole thing and start with you he said lord he threw himself in the bridge. He said, Take me, blot out my name of these very people that ha um, had rebelled. His heart went for them, see. And when a minister that's got the people on his heart, how could I ever feel justified to my before God and to myself to ever hold anything back from a people that you love better than you love yourself? How could a man take a person into the church? by being a hand join or a sprinkle or some false baptism or something and let them lay under the influence of a lie and know that that bible is there and says he loves that person 
do I have to beg for my living, whatever it is? Let me be honest with God and the people to tell them the truth. Never let me be a deceiver. How can I deceive who I love? Though I have to hurt them, yet I love them. That's the reason his punk a child is because you love him, not because you don't like him, because you love him. If he's wrong, he'll get killed if you can't, uh, you don't correct him. Now, so has the ministry been as it has, so is it today. It's been preached and thoroughly vindicated by the word of God. And it couldn't be man. It has to be God. So it has to be. Notice the same scriptural signs that Jesus done has reoccurred on the earth in the last days. The very same scriptural sign that he identified himself as Messiah has identified him today. He is the Messiah. The same material signs has appeared on the earth that appeared by he. What he was, same pillar of fire that Saint Paul saw, same one, all that reoccurred with the same nature in it, doing the same thing. Jesus claimed that he's done nothing until the Father showed him. And the Father is the Holy Spirit. We realize that it's just our office of God. If it isn't, then which was of them is the Father of Jesus Christ. Jesus said God was his Father. And the Bible said that the Holy Ghost was his Father. Now you can't make him an illegitimate child. So the Holy Ghost is God. So was Jesus God. So God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, it's three offices of one God. It's three attributes of the same God. You are part of God and I'm part of God, see? But I'm not all of God and neither are you all of God, see? It's attributes of God upon us as sons adopted by Jesus Christ, which God himself become flesh to die for us. Now the Holy Spirit always showed him signs, things to come, and never was wrong. It was always perfect. Is that right? He did not take credit to himself. He gave credit to God. He said that the son can do nothing himself but what he sees the father doing. That. And the father, the Holy Spirit, was his father. Is that right? Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, which was his father. And the Holy Ghost showed Jesus things to come, told him things that was, and he was a God prophet because the word of the Lord only comes to the prophet, showing that the words come in a minor form and the prophets wrote what the Lord told them, but he wrote nothing because he was the word. He was the word. Notice the same Holy Spirit that lived in him, yet being a little while in the world will see me no more, yet ye shall see me because I will be with you even in you to the end of the world so i will come to you and he said i was a father that was in him that will come to you and he said when the holy ghost is come upon you he will reveal these things that are taught you and will show you things to come there you are now notice now notice that as the holy spirit watching the church then so has the Holy Spirit done exactly the same things today, announcing by the pillar of fire just exactly was at the beginning. And the same thing, and seeing this come upon Jesus, John announced it at the river of Jordan and has proved everything, even scientific pictures of it. It can't be disputed. It was scientifically, it was material. It, if it wasn't a mythical thought, it wasn't psychology. As George J. Lacey said, the mechanical eye of the camera won't check psychology. The light struck the lens. And uh, what about you, church, that about six or eight months ago here and standing here saying, It's thus said the Lord, I'm going to Tucson, Arizona. There'll be blast. Seven angels will come appear. Remember? Congregation says, Amen. Not even God making it so real until the Look magazine look took the picture of it. Spiritual for so materialized. Just exactly the same, the seven angels which brought forth the winding up of all the scriptures cause all the mysteries of the entire Bible lays in the seven seals. We know that that is the book, it's seal. Without even doubt, it's a mystery of the entire book laid in those seven seals that the Lord let us bring. And there is man sitting here today 
was right there present with me when it happened. Luke magazine proved the same thing, that it actually happened because it was God that told it. And it was God that stands behind his word to perform it when he says he'll do it. Therefore, it's not some man, kind of person like himself, that's among you people, it's eternal God. He uses men. That's true. He does nothing outside of what he does by men. We realize that he, that's his agent, that's what he chooses. Why, I don't know that he could make the sun to preach the gospel. He could make the wind to preach the gospel. He could make the wind to do these things, but he chose men. That was his idea, that human would speak back through human, not himself. The word of the Lord came to the prophets, the prophesiers, the preachers, and a prophesier that denies the original word. How can he be a true prophet? See, he can't be because he's denying the truth of the word. And then, if it doesn't, then his word itself, as it's preached by the trueness of the word and by the trueness of the Holy Spirit, it will manifest every promise that he promised. That's how we know whether it's right or not. That's what Jesus said. If I do not that which is written of me to do, then don't believe me, see? Now, we see these things. Remember, the seven seals was finished. And when those seven seals truths, seven revealed truths, one of them he wouldn't permit us to know we how many was here at the seven seals and heard all of you, I guess, see? The seventh seal, he wouldn't permit it. He stood right there in the room and revealed every one of them. And if I ever preached anything in my life was inspired, it was that. And it ought to be true to you. Stand here and tell you that is going to happen and go right there and even science and everything else the scientific research and everything mystery to the people proved that it happened right there and come right back and hear it unfold and make every word exactly right what day we are living where we are and remember in this that sixth seal where all the seven trumpets sounds under that sixth seal when we get to that you'll see that Every seven trumpet took place in that six zero. The seven rose a mystery. Watch that seven. That's a finish. That was the coming of the Lord. Heaven was quiet, silent. Nobody moved because Jesus said himself, not even an angel of heaven knows when I will return. I don't even know it myself. What time the Father put uh, that in his mind? God alone knows it. The Spirit said, I don't even know it. Then it wasn't revealed when that seventh trumpet sounded, or the seventh angel, a seal was opened, then there was silence in heaven. See, it wasn't give away what would take place. But under the sixth seal, when these trumpets opened, remember under there we find the, out the lamb came forth, appeared on the scene. He had left the mercy seat. His work of redemption was finished. And he came forth and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne and time was no more and immediately an angel appeared in the seventh chapter or the tenth chapter and the seventh uh, verse saying this angel come down and swore that time was no longer but you see in this book was what was redeemed it was a book of redemption and everything that he had redeemed was written in that book all that he died for was written in that book and he could not leave his meritorious seat until he had thoroughly redeemed. And he couldn't redeem it at the cross because they were predestinated in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he had to stay on there to make intercessions until that last person was finished. Glory. But one day he rose there. From there came forth. Where was that at? It was still in the abstract. God, owner, God Almighty. And John looked around and he wept. Because there was no man worthy even to look on the book and especially open the seals to reveal the hidden mystery, what the hidden mystery was. The mysteries was in the seven seals. When these seven seals was opened, that opened up the entire Bible, the seven seals, it was sealed with seven mysteries. And in these seven seals held the entire mystery of it. And it was a book of redemption, New Testament. Not the old, it was a 
only proclaimed for the New Testament, they had been, cannot be made perfect without us. Hebrews 11 saying, Now the redemption only come when the Redeemer died, and they were potentially under the blood of lambs, not the Redeemer, hadn't been redeemed yet until the Redeemer came. Notice now, when this Redeemer, John, looked around, and he has sat God on the throne with a book in his hand, and he had sealed with seven seals, and the whole plan of redemption was in it, and it had been lost by the human race, Adam, and God, it went back where Satan couldn't take it. He just caused him to lose it. But where did the book go to then? Didn't belong to the human race. The blessings didn't belong here. Here in the human race had lost it. And so it went right on back to the original owner. That was God. Here he sat with it and he called for some man, somebody to come and claim it. John looked around and there was no man in heaven, no man on earth, no in, no body, no angel, nothing could take the book or to lose the seals or even to even look on it. And no man was worthy. John said he wept bitterly. Then the angel came to him and said, Weep not, John, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed, and he is worthy. And John looked to see a lamb or see a lion. What did he find a lamb? It was a bloody lamb, a lamb that had been slain. How long? Since the foundation of the world. The lamb came forth, walked up to him that had the book in his right hand and received the book, climbed up on the throne and sat down. That's it. It was over then. When? When the seals was revealed. When the last one, that was everything that he had redeemed, there was nothing he came to redeem. Say, why didn't he redeem them 40 years ago? 2,000 years ago. See, their names are on the book of life. In that book, he had to stand here because it was God's purpose to redeem them. Their names was put on the long book of life before the foundation of the world. The lamb was put there with it to be slain. Here come the lamb when he was slain. Come back to make intercessions. Watch him. There will be a lot of impersonation, lots of everything else. But there were was really somebody was going to be saved for he, the church was predestinated to be without spot or wrinkle. She is going to be there. And the lamb died for the, that purpose. And when the last name on the book was redeemed, the lamb came forth and took the book. And the one that did it, the angels, the cherubims, the four and twenty elders, the beasts, everything, and crowned themselves, fell down before the throne, and said, Worthy art thou. John said, Everything in heaven and, and earth had been hollering, Amen, screaming, Hallelujah, and praises to God. The scream went up. Why? Their names was in that book to be revealed, and the Lamb had revealed it. The Lamb had redeemed it, but he could not come forth until every name was revealed, and that was taking place under the sixth seal before the seventh broke. Then the spotless, then the Lamb came for what he had redeemed he came to claim what he had redeemed he's already got it right here in the book taken it from his hand now he's coming to receive what he has redeemed that's his work he's done he came to receive it oh what a time has proven it the seventh seal proved it come back and took the book of redemption notice it was to be the seventh church uh, seventh angel's message that was to reveal the seventh, the seven seals, Revelation 10, 7. Now you'll find it, see? And when he saw this angel come down, put his foot on the land and on the sea, that was Christ, had a rainbow over his head. Notice him. You'll find him in Revelation 1, again, with the rainbow over his head. Look upon as Jasper and Sergius and so forth. Here he come, put one hand, put one foot upon the land and one upon the water, raised up his hand, he had a rainbow over his head, yet that's a covenant. He was a covenant angel, which was Christ, made a little lower than the angels to suffer. And there he came, he put his hands up to heaven and saw by him at least forever and ever, eternal one, the Father God, a time shall be no more. When that takes place, it ran out, it's done, it's finished. And then the scripture says at the message of the seventh angel, angel the messenger on earth, the seventh and the last church age, 
at the beginning of his ministry when he starts off into the earth at that time the mystery of god of those these seven seals should be made known by that time now we see where we are at could it be friends could it be notice all possible all that had been redeemed in the book he came forth for redemption all that was to be redeemed was in the book predestinated before the foundation of the world he came to redeem it all he had redeemed was written therein i want to ask you a question now and the people on tape listen close them hideous eyes that hideous head could that be why that this message has been so against women of modern age could this be the last angel's message what did he say down there at the river about 33 years ago as john was sent forth see to announce the first coming of christ your message will announce the second coming of christ around the world and that's what is done and then the coming must be at hand watch what's happened now why i've scratched my head i've walked on my pillow i've walked the floor what's the matter with you a few days ago i asked two men i was riding with i asked jack moore one time and all of you know brother jack moore um uh, going to him in shreveport i said that jack you've been as close as a friend as i've had on earth and before i asked him i asked my wife if anybody knows anything about me my buds and all is my wife see a dear person and i said to her one day i said honey as your husband i'm a minister of the gospel i don't want to bring any reproach upon the one that i love no i don't want to hurt you i wouldn't bring any reproach on you god forbid that i ever do anything that would harm you and how much more anything that would harm god how much i love him you are my wife he's my savior and god i want to ask you a question don't pull no punch tell me the truth i said have i studied so much and i wondered i'm uh, i'm a makeup funny or i know that everybody said what kind of a person well see you can't make yourself you are what you are by the grace of god and i said have i lost my mind just a little bit you know and kind of gone i said why am i condemning those women constantly when i love them they call they said i was a woman hater i just don't hate i just hate women see that's wrong i love women i mean as my sisters it ain't going to pat you on the back saying you're wrong i can tell you that i love you too much for that some people that uh, do that they be different kind of love see i love you because i love what you are you are a help me to a son of god you are part of him see and i love you because that you were made in the image of man and man was made in the image of god so therefore together we are in christ that's why i love you and any other thing in is nothing to god god knows that all my life saying that's right i love you why would i stand up and constantly when they say tell all the women when if they're going to come here by and preach comb the hair different put a hat or something on another who will start blasting away with short hair and you are, don't wear any makeup or so forth like that that's what they did all you talked about somebody says why don't you say the people believe to your prophet why don't you teach them women not to receive great spiritual gifts and things like that instead of trying to teach them stuff as that i said if they won't learn the abcs how will they no algebra say get that right first and the more i preach the worse it gets then you say why don't you quit no sir you have got to be a voice as a witness against one of the greatest men in the bible to ministry today laid his hands on me not long ago said i want to pray for you brother Branham, if you let me do it but god will take that out of your heart i said leave the women alone in things i said do you believe in that sir your holiness preacher I, he said certainly i believe. i don't believe it but I said that's up to i said no he said that's up to the pastors i said they're not doing it somebody has got to do it the river has got to be crossed their skin's got to be shackled off i don't want to do it god knows i don't want to do it many of them 
women feed my children, and they would lay their life down for me almost. You think, in the grace of God shed abroad by the Holy Ghost, you think I could stand still and see that poor person go plunge out into eternity without hope, and I don't scream out against it? Not to be a smart aleck, but the spirit of this nation, the spirit of the church, not the spirit of Christ now, the spirit of the church denomination has swung these women out into that mess out yonder. And I'm only a voice crying, get out of it, flee from that filth, don't let the devil do a thing like that to you, it's wrong. And your assemblies of God, let them women, let them bob off their hair, and but forbid them to wear makeup. There is really not even a scripture against makeup, but this is against bobbing your hair. She ain't even fit to pray before God. The Bible says that her husband has a right to give her a divorce and leave her right. She represents herself to the world as an impure woman. The Bible said so. She dishonors her own husband when she does it. That's exactly what the Bible said, see. Well, but a woman wearing makeup, we find a woman in the, um, in the Bible, only one, it was Jezebel. That's who it was. The only person in the Bible that ever wore makeup was Jezebel, and God immediately fed her to the wild dogs. She's become a disgrace, and even her, everything, everything that's mean is called Jezebel. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do it. What makes you do it then? The spirit of the devil. You don't realize it. I know you don't. You are good, too good at people. You're good. You shake my hand, talk to me, and I love you. That's right. But if I see that, wouldn't I be a hypocrite? Paul said, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. May no woman blood be upon me that day. And no man's. I've told you the truth. And I've hated to do it. Not hating because I don't want to do what God tells me to do. But I love you. I don't... want to hurt you so that I am going to do but pure divine love will drive you to it. Jesus even prayed to dodge the cross. Is that possible? That cup should pass. Say, nevertheless, not my will, thine. Am I going to have to be the fellow that says this? Am I going to be, have to be take them precious women that's so nice and everything and just shut them to pieces? Am I going to have to? Am I going to have to take my own minister brothers and stand there and tell them that they love money and the denomination better than they love God? Me? Not my precious brothers. That's put their arm. Oh, do I have to do that? Oh God, let don't let me do it. But I have not shunned to declare to you the whole council. It's genuine love that drove me to it. Is that why this message has been this way? Nowhere else in the world is it. Where is it at? Not all right. They are afraid, see. But it's exactly been fearless. Exactly. God is always that we see. All right. Is this why women has been so rebuked by this message? Not knowing it wasn't revealed. It was showed me. But it didn't come to me till just the other day. See? Look at there. All right. Sure fits the ministry. Now, wait a minute. Was there ever a time that it becomes a woman's world before? Yeah. According to history, in the days of Elijah, there's a woman named Jezebel, and she got rulership over the church of God. And the Bible says she will again in the last days, her spirit, through a church, her organization, and she'll be a whore, and all and the churches with her will be prostitutes, just like she is, is married. Revelation 17 said she's a whore, the mother of harlots. That can't be men, that's women, see? And they were all thrown alive into the lake of fire and consumed, that's true. And there you are, notice. Then that Jezebel rose on the scene. There was a man rose up against God. God brought her. We don't even know where he came from. He had no background of the ministry. He had he was no priest or nothing. He came forth an old rugged woodsman by the name of Elijah, and he laid the axe to the root of the tree. And they hated him. Not only that, but his whole congregation hated him. And one time 
He thought he stood alone. He said, no, I've got 7,000, yet that's right with you, see? That's the elected group, see? There's always that group said, don't fear, Elijah. I know you think you are run out because the denominations run you up. They're on top of the hill, but said, I've got 7,000 that believes the same thing. You're preaching, see? I got them. Then after his day, Rome took over, and there become a time like it was a woman's world again. All the fashions of the women, how they come out in their bonnets and things, see? And God raised up another one with the same spirit on him, the spirit of Elijah. Is that right? And he said the axe is laid to the root of the tree. And there was a little old festive woman in there, had married her, left her husband, married his brother Herod, Herodias, and she was acquainted up crown of that day, danced. She taught her girl how to dance. She had a daughter by her foster father, the, the foster father by the father, uh, his brother Herodias, that was the daughter of the woman. And then she taught her to dance, and she became a real striptease dancer after her mother, and she thought she could marry four or five times, do anything she wanted to. And here come Herod out. There were all Jews. Now remember, there were church people. Here come Herod out and his church to hear this prophet. The people believed was a prophet. He walked right straight into the both of their faces and said, It's not lawful for you to have her. And did that make her blow up, sing? Now, some honorary man would have said, How do you do, Herodias? We are sure glad to have you in our congregation today. But not John. Jesus said, Who did you go to see when you went out to see John? Did you go to see? That's all um, dressed like a, like a priest, no? That can kind of kisses the babies and buries the dead, see? He said, What did you go out to see? A wind? A wind shaken by any wind? They say, Come over here. We'll pray for you more if you just preach to us and we are uh, with the biggest organization not john no he never went to see that said what did you go to see then when you went to to see john went to hear and see john a prophet he said and i say to you more than a prophet you can receive the eat this is who the prophet spoke of was coming i'll send my messenger before my face and he prepared the way for the Lord. He was a messenger of the covenant. He said, There's not been a man that's born of a woman as great as he is. Sin. That's the kind of a man that God raised up for that day. Elijah, a backwoodsman, John, the same thing. See, the spirit of Elijah was upon him, John. And he says, When it comes a woman day again, that spirit will rise again before the coming of the Lord, when the earth will be burnt and the precious will walk out upon the ashes of the wicked like ashes under their feet he promised it again in these days notice the holy spirit promised that it was fitting to the time that we're living in there must be someone rise up that's got to come forth with that said the lord malachi the fourth chapter that's exactly what he said would be the sign just before the coming of the great and terrible day of the lord i send you elijah and what will he do Turn the hearts of the children back to the doctrine of the fathers, back to the Bible, out of this generational difference, and come back to the Bible, bring back to God. That's what he would do. Notice what a great time we're living in. Then prophets rebuked the modern women of their days, and they paid the price for it by their life. History proves that each one of those times was a woman's world when women controlled look about today we'll have a, a one president one of these days looks like uh could happen right now actually that she's president see he's just a figurehead here not long ago in one of the other nations she was getting so much praise and everything that all the people to the president himself said i'm her husband the president has did see she said the fashions the women following it see just like Jezebel did. You had my someone on Jezebel religion, you know. You know about it. You see where we are now. You see what happened here a week or uh, two ago. Here in the city, the faith Lutheran minister invited the Catholic priest of the, uh, the Sacred Heart to come up and preach for him. 
and he did preach. And the faith a Lutheran minister went down to the Catholic priest and preached for him. The Council of Churches over here now, that's meeting in Rome, this circular letter at my good friend uh, David Duplessis, when I sat there and cried to him about it at 14 Mile Creek not long ago, not to realize he swung the church right into Babylon when everybody's saying, oh, all the church is going to be one now. Yeah, I know that. See, just exactly what's written in the book of Prophecy 1933. That will take place. Why don't you realize that Satan uniting together? The Bible says that, and just after a bit, just a little while, as soon as she become one, then the interdenominational is finished. See, there will be your mark of the beast, right? See, I just I ain't got time to go on this, but nearly a quarter of twelve. See, I want to finish this up, get to this point. I'm just laying the scriptures in here where you can see the possibility of where we are at. And then we'll close just in a few minutes. Now notice just what taken place. The prophets rebuked those women in them days and called them woman haters. That's right. History proves it was so. Not, now wait just a minute. You're writing down the scriptures. You have to put the first Timothy 5, 6. The Bible said, the woman that lives in worldly pleasure can't be the presence of God. So it had to be the woman that lives in worldly pleasure is dead while she's living. That's what the prophet said, St. Paul. The woman that lives in this worldly condition is dead while she's living. And if she rejects mercy, she can come to the cross a separating line where there is no place for her no more. And then where is she at? With her painted eyes. I can't hear. And she's across the line. There's no way to come back. And there's got to be a ministry preached to her. But remember, at that time, it's all over, it's done, it's just a haunting. There'll be a ministry that will show great wonders, Joel said so. But there'll be no time for redemption, it's all over. The Lamb's done, took his book and redeemed his, it's over. As Jesus first preached and was rejected, and then went and haunted those people, those that were in there, preached to them that were in prison, would not repent, no time for salvation, that same ministry will have to repeat again. What if that could be the third pool to the eternal lost? What if it is there? I hope it's not. What if it is? Think of it. Just a minute now. What if it is? God forbid. I got children, see? But it sure looks pretty close here. Why did that vision come when I was a kid? Why did I never think of it before? Why did that trance come there in the room the other day. See, here it is. It's right in the midst of the lost souls lost. And Jesus preached to them, witness, but they never repented. And the more I preach, the worse they get. There's no repentance, no place for it. The lamb took his book when the seventh seal just ready for it to be opened. The sixth seal, remember, he hid the seventh seal from us. He wouldn't do it. When the angel stood day by day telling it, and when he wouldn't do it, that one said, the silence in heaven, no one knew it. It was the coming of the Lord. Oh, you say, it can't be. I hope it isn't. Just let go. Just a little further now. Here, I got something wrote down. See, all right. Remember, she that liveth in worldly pleasure of the things of the world, acting like it, she could go to church and act like a saint and don't have to have one thing to do with it. See, but she's dead while she's living. Look at the damnations has done for her. They made a hand of the Holy Word, which is contrary to the Bible. They made her a preacher. It's forbidden of the scripture. Even makes her now become ruler, mayors, governors, everything in the country, and a minister in the house of God. When she's guilty of every sin that was ever committed, she is the cause of it, right? No, now I'm not not speaking of rights. She is guilty. She's the one that caused every baby to be born blind. She's the one that caused every grave to be dug. She's the one that caused every sin, sickness, sorrow. An ambulance can't ring unless a woman caused it. No crime can be done. No sin, no death, no sorrow, no suffering. But a woman done it, and God forbids her to go preach it, to put uh, the pulpit to preach. But yet they do it. Demination, see why is that? She's a goddess. 
how the devil is at work, why the Catholic people make them women gods, pray to them. That's right, goddess, Mary, and so forth. I see why in the ecumenical council they say that it was would come to pass that they would pray a little bit more to Jesus if it should be help the Protestants to come in. See, oh, that sugar coated and changeable. They said, see, it's still the same old devil. The Bible said, and he caused all. To receive a mark upon their forehead that didn't have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's the predestinated church I'm talking to, not those out there, no sir. Out of every group he pulled, he's predestinated. That's what is coming for in every age. But there she stands. There she is, that's her. Preach the word, handle the word, become a goddess, cause the and the cause of every sin, Bible said. I'll not suffer a woman to teach or serve any authority, but be in obedience, as also saith the law, see? And she can't do it, but they make her a ruler of the land, mayor, governor. Soon she'll be president, sure. There you are. And that's the way it goes, see? And the people does that because they don't care about this word. They'll never see it. Look at those Jews standing there, scholars, fine men. Jesus said, you're the father of the devil. What if I brought him to a trial right now before you? Let's just try it a minute. And God forgive me for taking sides against him, but just a minute to show you something. What if I would say, well, I pray to God as walking tongues, hallelujah. I know. Yeah, I got it. Bless God, yeah. Aha, you did remember. Then people in Israel. The Bible said after he called the people out, he saved them out of Egypt. He destroyed them because they didn't follow the message. See? They ate manna out of heaven. They ate manna that God rained on earth for them to eat and stood in the presence of the messenger and seen them make pillar of fire and heard the voice of God and seen it confirmed. And then because they wanted to believe Korah, there can be more holy men. There can be this, that, or the other. You've got to be holy too. You've got to do all this. All the people is holy. God said, separate yourself from them. Get away from them. Moses said, all is on the Lord's side. Come with me. That's right, see. And he just opened up the earth and swallowed them, see. They were good people too. Sure they were. They were fine people. Yes, sir. But that didn't do it. Not at all. Not all faith saith lord lord but the one that doeth the will of my father not he that starts it's he that finishes that there's no shortcuts you're disqualified at the end of the race no shortcuts you must come just the way the scripture said if it says repent and be baptized in the name of jesus christ and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost there is no shortcut shaking hand joining church or denomination you come that way except you die to yourself and be born of the Spirit of God, you are lost. That's all. There's no shortcuts. You say, well, I belong to church. I know, that's good. Well, my mother, I don't doubt that. But this is you I'm talking to, see? You've got to come that way because there's no shortcuts. You're disqualified at the judgment. You come the one way. There's only one way. The Christ is that way. Christ is the word that lives in you, that verifies everything that he promised in its season. See, did you get that? When you says amen. All right, notice now, some say these people are good. Sure, I don't say they're not good people. I don't say St. Cecilia and all them wasn't good women. So was my mother. But I sure don't pray to her, certainly not. Certainly, I've seen lots of good people. But they are not goddesses, they are women, men. There's only one mediator between God and man. That's why, why would a man, a Pentecostal man, wild man, that circular bit letter, the brother of Duplicis, a precious brother, has got circulate. Maybe some of the, you has got it here. Yeah? Said here, yeah, we got it in the ecumenical council by the side of the Pope and said, this is a very spiritual. That discernment of spirit, isn't it? Oh, the spirit of the Lord there. Yeah was there very spiritual yeah there you are why because it's an opportunity to unite the protestants and that together 
which we have fought for, for for years and the Bible has stood for and told us that would come. And one of the greatest leaders comes right in and said, that's right, that's what we do. And the whole Protestant church is falling for it. And just exactly if you look up there, and that saith the Lord first, the word said it, then the spirit of the Lord said in 1933 that told all these other things about the nations going to war and how the machines would be and everything like that, said that's exactly what would happen at the end. And here it is, it never failed. And here we see it shaping up. You remember my sermon on Jezebel religion not long ago. You remember Elisha coming down the road that morning to tell them that I preached on that sea and how I predicted then that the time would come when this economical council would finally become the mark of the beast because it would unite with the beast and is doing it in my age. I've lived to see it. And here the Protestants by the millions fall for it. Why? That's what they're looking for. They are blind. Jesus told those Pharisees, you are blind leaders of the blind. If the blind leads the blind, he said, won't they all fall in the ditch? And that's where they fall. How could I ever believe that a man that stood with me and talked with me would ever sit and make a remark like that? See, it's hid the eyes from the wise and prudent and reveal it to babes such as you learn. I know someday that's going to cost my life. That's right, it's going to, but here is the truth is being known. Uh -huh. First one to die for this Holy Ghost plan was John the Baptist. But he died like, he didn't shark. He, he died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus. They crucified him. He preached the Spirit. Will save him from sin. Isn't that right? Then they stoned Stephen. He preached against sin. He made them so angry. They dashed his head in. But he died in the spirit. He gave up the ghost and he wanted to join the others, that life giving host. There's Peter and Paul and John the Divine. They gave up their lives so the gospel could shine. What they do? They mingled their blood with the prophets of old so the true word of God would always be told. Souls under the altar were crying, How long for the Lord to punish? That's, that's the wrong. But there's going to be more that give their life blood. Yep, that's right. For this Holy Ghost gospel and its crimson flood. Just creeping with blood. Creeping with blood. Yes, it'll do it. Someday, when I'm watching that hour when it's finished, some sister just uh, had a dream. She sent it to me, said, I've seen them. That church fixed away. It's going to kill me exactly sometime. I'm getting out of my car, going in to be fired from, but said, then the spirit said, not at this time, but it will come later. Aha. Uh -huh. God forbid that I compromise on anything. I know nothing but just Christ and him crucified. We're living in a horrible day. Sin has did this, yep. They stoned Stephen. They had John's head cut off. She did. I don't know. I will give ours, but it will be someday, all right? Notice in St. John 5, if you want the scripture on that, St. John 6, 49 is where they eat manna, and Jesus said, and they're everyone dead. Say, well, my sister, I've seen this woman dance in the spirit. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. i seen them do that. I've seen her speak in tongues. I've seen her, yeah? Jesus said, and many will come to me that day and say, I've done all these things you see the eight man in the wilderness jesus said and the everyone eternally separated the dead that's eternally gone they perished right there in the wilderness you remember hebrews the sixth chapter ones that was once under the truth and refused to walk in it there is no more repentance for them see a borderline believe when the truth is presented to a person for the last time and they refuse to receive it according to the book of hebrews see they will there's not even nothing in the world can ever save them. They are finished. No repentance, no redemption. There's nothing left for them. They're eternally separated. The Bible says so, looking for a fearful fire and indignation which shall devour the adversary. And when the truth of the gospel has been proven, thoroughly vindicated, and then turn around and walk away from it, they are finished. That's awful. 
But I have to tell you, remember, the angels which kept not their first estate, but left there in that prison house in darkness, where the world is working today in that same person, there's no repentance. Remember, a few years ago I said, when I come down from Chicago, either America will receive in this year or she won't receive it at all. See? And there she's gone, yeah? Now I wonder if the third pole could be, oh God, may it be far from that is what the third pole is for. Could that be? Oh my. Think of it, friends. Think of it. I don't like to. Jesus said, this kind of hypocrisy, if you want to put that down, Matthew 23, 7, I got here, read that. But you see, you blend Pharisees. Let, have you just got a couple of minutes different? Conscience says, Amen. Let's see. Let's just turn to that because I said it, read it. There was something there I want to read just before now. I'll maybe cut something else out, but let's uh just get this just a minute matthew 23 just a minute all right and we are going to begin at the 27th verse just listen now you read the whole thing when you get home if you will just in a few minutes now watch here matthew 23 and begin at the 27th verse woe unto you scribes now remember that is holy men is referring to woe unto you scribes and you pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto white water sepulchres, as dead people see, white sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones, and all uncleanness, hypocrisies, and enemies and strife on the inside of them, outside from Dr. So and so. Even they so outwardly appear righteous unto men. Look at the Camerical Council and the Pentecostal setting there. But within, you are full of hypocrisies. And finally, what is iniquity? Something that you actually know is right, and you won't do it. Jesus said, now watch. What generation he puts in this on now? What do you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? Because he built the tomb of the prophets and garnished the sepulchres of the righteous, saying, oh, the prophets. And so, if they had been in them days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. We would have believed the word of the Lord if we had believed, lived back there. Watch. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of God which killed the prophets. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. That's just what's taking place. Now watch what it says here. Ye serpents and generation of vipers, how can you escape the determination of hell? How can you do it? Now he's talking to ministers. See, that's right, holy men. How can you stand and know the Bible predicts and tells them people not to do that and you stand and compromise for a few lousy stinking dollars, some popularity, and somebody to pat you on the back and call you a doctor? How can you say you love those people? I'm preaching on tapes too. See. How can you? How can you say you love those people and let a thing like that take place? See, you Pharisees, you blind, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell when you, how can a man today that knows that these things are wrong and stand there and hold his congregation to make a domination grow and fail to tell women and men how are you going to escape the wrath of hell? When it's made for you, how are you going to do it? See, listen here. What is going to be? Therefore, the thirty-fourth verse. Behold, I will say unto you, prophets, I will in the future. There is a Pharisees coming back again. See, wise men, scribes, and some of them we shall kill and crucify, and some of them we shall scourge in the synagogues and persecute them from city to city. He predicted he would send them prophets with the word of the Lord, and what will they do? The same thing their fathers did because that's what you are see spirits don't die men as possessed of them dies but spirits don't die he said you are the children you are one and just notice how these things are how that saint paul stood there 
he believed as a prophet and condemned women to bob their hair, condemned the organizations, announced that every man that wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ must come and be baptized over again. That's right. And today they compromise and sweeten it around. They don't know no different. Though it's beautiful, if the hour is over, I might say this, see, they were blind, predestinated to be blind. God be merciful, they couldn't see it. Jesus said, you are blind. Uh, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, when you read the same word, and they all, all of them has read, and here you come and condemn me, and I'm exactly what the word said, that it would be in this last day. I was to be the messenger of this day. I'm the Messiah, he said. In no is so many words. I'm the Messiah. Have I failed to prove it? If I haven't done what's written of me, then condemn me. And you blind Pharisees lead your people right off into a thing like that. And you said the whole bunch said, well, the blind leads the blind, said you are. You said, oh, if we would have lived back in the time of St. Paul, yeah? I would have took sides with St. Paul. You hypocrites, see? Why don't you take sides with his doctrine? You would have done the same thing then would than you do now. For you are the children of your fathers. The organization, organization of fathers, Pharisees, Sadducees, and self righteous see? That's it. Uh -huh. I tell you, and to the hour that we live, wonder if this could be the third pool. Just a minute now. See, Jesus said, this is the kind that receives a greater damnation, see? Isn't it awful as a great American one time when the enemy was about to take this country because a man in the midnight hour jumped up on a horse and rode down the road screaming, the enemy is coming, it was Paul Revere. I'm an American too, and I'm riding this midnight hour not saying the enemy is coming, but he's here, he ain't coming, he's already here. He has done conquered, I'm afraid it's over, conquering this midnight hour. Remember at Tucson, the seven angels, what the message was, the finishing of the mystery of God. Immediately after that, coming down the range, you all heard about the mountains. Notice Brother Fred got some pictures of it, and Brother Tom and I got some pictures, some movies, everything. We're going to show it here someday, show you just where it's at. You know the story. Watch the three peaks. He said, there is your first, second, and third. And Brother Fred has got an outstanding picture of it. When he and Sister Martha passed, the clouds had come up from the moisture of the ground and had hid the re all the rest of them. And it showed the three pools, one here, one here, and one here. See, the seven, watch. The first three, three is perfection. That's when the ministry went forth. The second pool was discernment of spirits. The prophecy first was the healing of the sick the second was a prophecy that went forth and it showed the secret of the thoughts when the word itself was made manifest which that's grace but remember the seventh is a finish could this be the third finish pool it's all over could it be think of it now just think where you at see seven is always a finish three pools Jesus' ministry consisted of three pools. Did you know that? Notice and be sincere if you was in your life now for a minute, a few minutes. His first pool was healing the sick. He became a very popular man. Everybody believed him. Seemed like. Is that right? When he went forth healing the sick, everybody wanted him in their church. But one day he stood around and started prophesying. For he was a word, and he was a prophet, and Moses spoke of. And when he did tell them, and uh, tell them how they were living, and the things they were doing, he became very unpopular. For his second pool. One day it was time to write back again. Just think a minute, could it be? The first healing, everybody. The second, oh, could it be Jesus only? It could be a blessed verb. It could be. Same thing they did there, see? Same spirits living the same kind of people, condemned people, that can never be saved because they were condemned before. They, like Judas Iscariot, born the son of perdition. You say, Judas, sure. Remember, he was very religious, but he couldn't go the way with the message. 
he could take part of it, but the rest of it he could have stomach. They can take the healings and things like that. But when it comes to God speaking spirit into existence, then that's too deep for them. Can't be. That was Judas. His spirit can live right on to that spot. He can't go eat after that, see? They could take the uh, Moses, all right, when he opened the Red Sea and so forth like that. When it come down to telling, there wasn't all the rest of them, wasn't to do this or that or the other. He makes himself a god over us, see? They couldn't go. That Korah in them, they had to have an organization, so God kept swallowing them up. Jesus' ministry, when he was healing the sick, he was wonderful. Oh, that young prophet of Galilee. Why he makes a blind to see, even raise the dead. We got three cases of which he actually raised the dead. But one day he turned around and he said, You generation of vipers, you make the outside of the platter clean, you appear to be holy, but the inside of you there's nothing but a bunch of snakes. Oh, when that prophecy went forth, condemning that organization, then it changed. They turned against him. That's right. And finally, by rejecting him, they crucified him. But you can't kill the ministry, it lives on. You can put the messenger to sleep, but you can't put the message. Uh huh, right? He lived on. And notice when the third pool of his ministry came, the first was healing the sick, the second was rebuking organizations and prophesying what they had done, what they were, and what was coming. What is, what is, what will come, and what was, what is, and what will come. That's what he did, is that right? But his third pool, when he preached to them, lost, that couldn't be saved no more. They were down there when the big painted eyes, oh, oh, preached the souls in hell that did not accept mercy, but were eternally separated from the presence of God. But they had to recognize it. What was because God made him there. Wonder if his ministry climbs out the same way in the last days. It was as the Father sent me to send you. The works that I do, shall you also lost, could never be saved. They had rejected mercy. That was the third pool. Now, is there any question? The first pool healed the sick. Is that right? Second ministry was prophesying. Third ministry was preaching to the eternal lost, the three mountains, and so forth. They lost eternal. Noah's ministry, all ministries done the same. Noah preached. That's exactly right. He went into the ark. And when he went into the ark, there were seven days that nothing happened. His testimony preached to the doomed. Sodom and Gomorrah, Jesus referred to both of them as coming before the coming of the Son of Man. So shall it be like the days of Noah. So shall it be like it in the days of Sodom, he referred to Noah. Noah had three pools, and the third was a, to the lost after the door shut. For God let it sit right there where nobody could enter or go out. They were inside. For as on the seventh mountain, the highest mountain, that's where he settled the ark mountain. See, that's right. In the days of Sodom, the first pool was a righteous lot. And the Bible said the sins of Sodom vexed his righteous soul daily. How them women uttered and done, and remember, as it was in the days of Noah, what was it doing? Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, women, sin. What was it in the days of Sodom? Women. And the first message was thought, they laughed him to scorn. Then they sent another messenger, two of them, and they went down. That was a, his second pool for Lot, for Sodom. But look at that one that went last. There was no more mercy. There was more and more mercy. It was all over then. All over at that time, the third messenger that went down there, the third pool, what was he? What kind of ministry did he have? He sat with the elected and told them, what was taking place behind him? That right. But when he stepped off into Babylon, onto Sodom, 
he wanted to find even Abraham crying if I could find 50 righteous on down to 10 righteous he said yes find 10 righteous let me tell you something sister just a minute you may be old-fashioned but you got something the sex queens hasn't got you've got something that they can never have right you might be old-fashioned in your dressing dress up like a lady they might say look at that old holy roller don't you worry she's got something that the little sex old sex queen that's got all the world looking out at her out there she hasn't got it she can never have it she's lost eternally she's doomed see she's never you got moral you got virtue she's got nothing she's got a bait that traps the lost souls into hell the blind walks into it now you've got something you know you might not even be on a church book but it might be your righteous life that's holding the wrath of god from the world today the world won't believe it you woman that's called holy roller you little man that can hardly know anything but you cry for god day and night for the sins of the country you might be the one that's holding off the wrath if i could find 10 as spirit if i could find 10 as it was in the days of sodom so shall it be see what i mean now not if i could find 10 methodists if i could find 10 Baptists, if i could find 10 pentecostals if i could find 10 athletes if i could find 10 senators if i could find 10 ministers but if i could find 10 righteous there is one righteous as christ christ living in one them 10 see our spirit but that last messenger preached to the doom you see he went down there preached don't see what happened but the fire fell the next morning right after he performed those signs immediately after he performed his prophecy ministry while he said a laugh she said i didn't I said yes you did see now immediately after that he entered babylon or went down into sodom he never found them so the health fire fell he found lot and his two daughters said get out of here right now see it went down he went down there remember he was on his road down he sent messengers before him but he went down himself right to find out if all this thing was so and he found it full of what painted face women the message to the doomed what they do they laughed at it what they do today the same thing i brought the assemblies i brought the oneness i'm i've danced in spirit glory to god is speaking all right go ahead i'll cut my hair if i want to i'll do this i'll see this but i don't have to be baptized in jesus name i don't care said paul is an old woman hater anyhow that's uh, all right go ahead one of these days if you haven't already you'll cross that line you'll never desire no more to do what god's uh, what's right did you hear what i said is the matter brother sister do you realize what's been said you'll cross that line and you never want to do it you still hear the gospel sure but you'll never accept it you can't accept it but the gospel will be preached to the doomed those who are eternally lost can't get saved no more you are already in that spot and don't know it you think you're living in pleasure and are dead while you're alive oh listen all those who rejected the message of the hour before doom the gospel was preached to the doomed first before they went without mercy noah shut up the at was a testimony god shut the door after his third pool after the third pool at sodom the doors was shut there was no more mercy and ten couldn't be found and the lost had the gospel preached that could not be saved because it was just had been that way in every age every age reject the message before judgment have they done it again is that appearing in a pillar of fire down here on that river is that appearing along in the message of cutting the women and throwing the places where it should be and rebuking those ministers who takes the place with the dimensions instead of staying with the word when god has thoroughly vindicated that it's him and not some pregnant annoyed thing like a man oh it's god and we have now come to a spot that the third pool would return again to the lost eternally what was that vision was given me as a little old boy out yonder and i went west and there is a golden cross of the gospel shining down has declared the sign from heaven just exactly remember the cross was in a paranormal 
the computer can read also we'll be able to see call it b that is the head part where it's ended and started from there and come up to the headship like the pyramid come up through Luther, Wesley, Pentecost and all the cupping of the stone. Could it be that? If it's it, where are we at? It, this might, I hope it isn't, but it's got to be. It's going to be. Just remember the ministers has to. They always doubt it. Just the same with the other one. It has to come and God don't change. Think of it. Bite your conscience with your spiritual teeth and find out where we are. What if it is and you're still the way you are? Then you might as well walk. You're finished. Then that outside after the book was taken by the Lamb, the sixth seal is revealed and all the seals is over. It could be. I hope it isn't. It could be. All right. Now, this is why this third pool has lingered so long. You notice the first pool and the second pool went from one to the other. I predicted, remember, when I first started about the first, and I said there'll come a time it'll even know the secrets of the heart. You remember how many, why all of you remember in that, uh, in my meetings around. And one night, I just walked into Regina up there and walked on the platform and by the Baxter there, several thousand people and a man walked up to the platform by the burn have snapped his fingers and there it was and from that it's been the same but it's always years since i've come off the field for about five years since i come off what is it worse than this has that been why it was like in the beginning in genesis god long suffering remember when he made the world the seventh day he made nothing. He rested. See, God, long suffering in that sixth year, not willing that any should perish or might come to repent. God was long suffering. Also in Genesis 15 16, if you want to put it down, 16 15, he told Abraham over in that land of the Amorites the iniquity. They were Gentiles. Now, I can't take you in there because right now, because the iniquity of the Amorites, the Gentiles, is not fulfilled, fulfilled up yet. But I will judge them. I'll come in that fourth generation and I'll judge that nation with the rod of iron. Is that right? Has it been so long that God's long suffering, the ministry constantly through tape and everything else, has calmed the world to see if there's one more? But maybe that last one coming just recently. Has it been the iniquity? Has been so long. If Jesus is the same, which he is in Hebrews 13 8, his message must be the same. Fixed into close, his action must be the same. If the first and second pull is out question, is a question in your mind about the first and second pull? Did it come to pass just like it said? Colossians says, Amen. Then why question the third? See, why would you question it? The first two was identified by the scripture, it proved. To you this morning that the third is identified by the scripture too look upon the world and see where she's at look how they have rejected the truth and how it's been properly identified the prophecy part now where we at oh god merciful that makes my heart bleed on the inside what about it where we are remember these seven peaks up here they could tell you it's uh, there is not another peak beyond that it's on the commercial continental divide it goes right into the desert and from there on eternity sets in seven peaks right on the continental divide and that's right between right and wrong and at the end of that the third pool was the last pool of the range is that right see all right noah went in then after seven days nothing happened see in seven days the judgment come if only listen now in closing if only in Noah's time, they could have knew that sign. If they would have known, only known, now I'm going to close. If they would have only known that sign, the world in that day that God proved here, by the reading of the scripture a while ago, he destroyed them people. Not without mercy, mercy was sent to them by a prophet. 
they wouldn't believe it. God is merciful, but he sent mercy, but they wouldn't receive it. He always sends mercy first. But if they would have known that sign, what was the end time sign? And when they seen all at once salvation, let up nobody seen. Just the same thing, you know, the door was closed. If they, there was the only one who knew that sign, that was Noah and his group. That was only one nude. When that door swung together, Noah knew it. No one knew that was a finish. He knew it. That's right. If you only knew the sign, oh, if they would only have only knew that sign, when they seen this one coming there, had been up there with Abraham. If they had only knew that that modern pilgrim of that day went down there, him and an old Earl Roberts, and preached the message to them, blinded the people, if they had only knew them old righteous Methodists and Baptists back yonder had been assigned to them of that day lot when the sins of Baxi's righteous his very soul. Then what did the Methodists and the Baptists turn into? Like Lord did, same thing. But the righteous out of there come out sure. What if it was when Billy Graham went down, going after a decision, chewing gum, punching one another and laughing, bobbed hair his painted up faces and did not even make a bit of a move about it. Come back the next day, Billy said, I have 30,000, come back in a year, I ain't got 30. Oh, I made a decision, I ain't got, I ain't going to hell, I'm going to heaven, see? Wedding right in on scene. If they'd have only, and then the gospel being preached in the power and signs and wonders, with the pillar of fire over it and everything going on exactly the, and predicted and set out, if they'd have said a bunch of holy rollers, it's meant of telepathy, same kind of a witch spirit, a devil, that's all it is. Don't you believe it? It's not in your organization. You don't have nothing to do with that. If they've only, have only knew the sign, if they've only knew what Jesus said, if you have only known your day, Jerusalem, if you have only recognized, but said now you're left to your own, if you only know all oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often that hovered you as a hen would have blowed from the judgments that's just to come, but you didn't know your day, you stoned the prophets and killed the righteous. If you had only known your day, if you had only known and had been up on your scripture and known that my coming was a sign of your end, now you're blind. Now you've been rebuked, your time is over. And it was, that's right, if you have only known the time. Look, when Jesus made that declaration, the world went right on. See, the world went right on normally. Why? For they knew not the hour. The first went right on. When Noah went into the ark, the world moved right on. The scoffers in that day, they were still had sex parties. They still eat, drink, married, done the things they do today. That's exactly normal. Ha ha. That old holy roller closed the door. Now, did you ever hear such a thing? Ha ha. Know what he says? We are all going to be drowned. Nonsense. Where is a water art? Scoffers. In the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. All right? No one knew the sign. Same thing in the days of Lot. Same thing in the days of Jesus. So is it today. They scoff at their last time. Same as Sodom. They never knew when that messenger was standing there, a message from God. They only laughed at them and tried to pervert them to their own acts. Is that right? Come in and join us. Be one of us. Is that right? Come in and join us. Be one of us. You'll be one of the boys. Come on, join us. See? They never knew their sign. I didn't know that when that message was going on, that the very, they couldn't see it, that the fire and wrath of judgment, as God, a fire blazes a brimstone and was kindling in the skies, they couldn't see it. The messengers could. Uh -huh. Lot knew it too. He knew it was there, certainly. Same as it is today, just the same thing. Wrath is kindling, atomic bombs are hanging, everything is at the end. It's the same now. Look, people, listen. Did you know you say by the Branham? Oh, what about 
all of it you know people can go right on preaching the gospel like they always did what they call the gospel it could be over they did in the days of noah they did in the days of lot they did in the days of jesus that's right even the jews after jesus told them that the wrath you're done you're finished there's no more you're finished oh he said that holy roller what school did he come from where did he come that remember he was ready then for his third pull aha uh -huh, that's right he said i oft would i have harbored you lord made his last call or oh, i mean the angel did the messenger ever who he was god represented for this day god represented in human flesh made the last sign performed the last duty it was all over then noah preached his last sermon the door closed behind him that all they laughed at it and made fun of it think the people can go on right on preaching the academic council can join up the Catholic church just as they promised to do all organizations can come on but the mark of the beast is already there and they take it in that see and they say oh hallelujah bless god there was so many saved last night they did they danced in spirit they spoke in tongues they don't mean one thing that don't mean one thing see oh they are meek and gentle and humble yes sir they got the fruit of the spirit that's no sign not a bit let me give you the fruit of the spirit between jesus and the pharisees see which one had the fruit of the spirit what if i stood i started a while ago against christ now for a minute god forgive me for even saying it see but just show you something what if i come to you and say say you congregation who is your friend who shows the fruit of the spirit your kind old priest who comes to you in the hospital when you are sick your gentle old priest that's right who is it that always loans you some money when you're up against it in a tight place you members of his congregation don't you go to your kind old priest and he loans the money saying who is it that always loving and kind and showing you the fruit of the spirit your kind old priest who is it that studied for years and years in the synagogues down here where his great 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 grandfather come from all the way down who was it studied and and got worked hard and got to doctors degrees and phds and LLDs to know this, his word and stand there and deliver it to you every sunday morning in his congregation your kind old priest who is this renegade called jesus what school did he come from what school is he out of where is his fellowship card what organization does he belong to what does he do when he's you have all have a family argument who comes to you a kind of priest to try to and you have an argument against this neighbor over here and your kind of priest comes and makes you up said you all have children you should do that that's when he what this Jesus of Nazareth does tears the thing up what does he do? Lambast your organization. What does he do? Call your priest a blind lead of the blind. He called them a snake in the grass. He took the sacrifice that God ordained and kicked the tables over and threw the money out and looked upon them with anger. Did you ever see a priest do look like that? Now, where is the fruit of the spirit? Uh huh. Uh huh. Not by speaking in tongues, not by dancing in the spirit, not by joining church not by the fruits of the spirit christian science can at smother any of you on that see and even deny jesus was divine not that but it's the word living that is if they had only looked he was the messiah he was a living word made manifest and a man has got the spirit of god in him or woman lives that word lives right out there in them that's the heartbeat the predestinated for the word of the lord comes to them and they are the word to the people written epistles read of all men is that right pull the third pull be on tip people that's you that's listening to this tip i wish you could look at this congregation at this time aha uh -huh. i hope you are feeling the same way what if it is look at the scriptures piled in here hold it to be is a third pull to preach the eternal doomed that rejected the message of salvation well you say the church is going yeah they will they'll go right on just the same but remember, all this time, Noah was in the ark. The bride is sealed in with Christ. The last member has been redeemed. 
the sixth seal has produced itself, the seventh seal brings him back to the earth. The lamb had come and took the book out of the right hand of him and sat down and claimed what he owned, what he had redeemed. That's right, it's always been the third pool. Three is perfection, the ministry come to its perfection when it reproduced Christ again in the natural amongst human beings as was predicted as it was in the days of Lot. Oh, think people could be go right on preaching, thinking they're getting saved, believing they're doing right, believing the organizations and are growing. Sure, and not even a ray of hope. And if that vision was that, and it's been so hard against women, we have come to that hour, door is closed, gone already, the book is in his hand. Think of it. Let me tell you, just before closing now, I'm closing. It was told about in the Ireland, facing the waters, there's a great reef that goes down along the side of the bank. And up on this great hill, there's a man going, walking along there one day just at the time for the tides to come in. And there was a noble man who lived on the hill that knowed those tides. He knowed the time of day that the tides were supposed to come. He knew what time the tides set in. This guy didn't care what time. He was one of these know-it-alls. He had no his own idea. He was an athletical man, smart, intelligent fellow, but he didn't know the time of the tide. He didn't know the country. He didn't know the time the sign was right, when the moon had dropped its back from the earth. And when God ever drops his spirit from the earth, brother, she is gone. It's all over. That moon will never move out of its place, the waters would cover the earth like it was when God started it in Genesis 1. But the moon sat there, and when it just even turns its head, the tides start running in. This wise old man who lived there in that presence of it knew what time it was. That was, this guy didn't know. He never studied it. He didn't care about it. And this wise old man ran out and said, My good man, dearest thou, go any further. Turn back quickly. There's a wall. You can't get up to the wall. You'll perish. It's the signs are on. The time, the tide will gush in all at once and you cannot return. Don't go any further. And the man turned around and laughed at him and said, go take your own, give your own business. I know what I can do and what I can't. And the tides caught him, see. It may be later than we think, see, it will catch you, don't go any further, don't you do it, people. If you've always believed in me as being God's servant, take my word this morning. If you ever did, it might be already too late. So much scripture shows it that way. Now remember, I don't see that it is, I don't know, but just look. And I've cut off about 10 pages here that I was afraid to tell you, see. Mrs. Wood is on record of that, and Mr. Wood... When I went down this morning to see them, I said, I can't tell them that. Can't go that far. I'll just put that this much scripture and leave it with them because it's going to be tipped. I'll go. And the people will laugh at this message. It's all right. It'll be a pastor turning back one of these days. Go on. Just be a church member. Cut off your hair. Paint your face. Go on and take Father, Son, Holy Ghost if you want to. That makes it three gods. And be a heathen. Go on. Stick your organization. Do so if you want to. Say, I dance in the spirit. I spoke with tongues. I got it. I've seen devils do the same thing. I've seen witches speak in tongues and interpret it. And I write in unknown tongues, interpret it. Who drank blood out of a human skull and called on the devil, dance in the spirit. The Mohammedans dance in the spirit. Like that until they take in splinters and run it under their fingers and they take a lance and run it up through their face like that and pull it out and not even a drop of blood will come out of it. The Indians will walk on fire barefooted, three foot deep and four, three or four foot across, blue, wave calls till they are white, hot, and they never get a scotch on their feet and they deny that it's such a thing as Jesus Christ. No, no, friend, it's what the word that tells it the people 
and the word has got to be one see jesus and the word was the same he was the word and when jesus lives in a human being that makes him and the word the same don't your life tells what you are now just look at yourself in god's looking glass see how long do i look this morning while we pray about speaks in another tongue and another back interpretation my children today i say unto thee yea I, even I, the Almighty God, has looked upon that today, and I have seen the evil that this creation has been brought to. Yea, I seen the sin that man these days walling within. Yea, dost thou not know that I have done a great thing for thee? Yea, I have sent forth a man in this last day. Yea, that he might be a mouthpiece unto the generation. But I say unto thee this day, my people have many have scoffed at this time yeah they have turned their backs upon the things that he has spoke but i say unto thee those that hear these words i shall cause great blessings to fall upon them i am the mighty god i shall reward this day for those that sincerely receive these words saith the lord wandered far from god now i'm coming home Pray if ever you pray, did pray. Open wide thy arms of love, Lord. I'm coming home, coming. While you continue singing, I want you to ask you something Is there a spot in your heart that seems to be darkened by sin? If it is, now is the time to get rid of it. Right now, if there is mercy left, this I hope it isn't so. I hope it isn't there, but. It doesn't look like it could be. Listen what the Holy Spirit said in the midst of the people after I got through. It's a voice unto you. And if there is, if you've got any darkness on your life, won't you come right here around the altar now while you continue to sing right now? If there is a worry, if there is a spot, don't put it off any longer, hoping and trusting that this is not so. But it will be one of these days, and it will be that today. Now, Lord, I'm coming with the breath of nostrils around you. If the two people could only see what's going on here now, just crowding over one another, crying, coming from everywhere. Who is that vision? What a little boy. Is it the hour? Is it the time when them weary looking gloomy hell being created right here on earth? Altars and aisles and everything are filled now. If you can't get to the altar or aisles anywhere amongst these hundreds here, just stand up and if you say I want to stand and pray, just people much know or near whatever you want to do. Oh my now, you can't hardly see anyone sitting down. There's people standing everywhere. May I say this God forbid? God forbid that what I've said is now. May I understand it? Everybody, God forbid, there is. I've got children that's not in. I've got two daughters and a son. I've got brothers. I've got my people that's not in. God forbid that grace has left us. That all this will only be pretending. If there's grace left, Lord, let me be wrong on this, Lord. Let it be wrong at this time that I, it isn't I, that people still can be saved. Grant it, Lord, I pray and commit this audience to you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, everybody pray now, just like what if it was. Now, I don't know that it is, but what if it is? It was. You pray in your own way. You just pray the way you want to pray. Just what if this was the truth? What if we do? What would we do, friends? What would we do? What was going to happen? Now pray. Everybody just cry. Just pray the way you want to. Just cry out to God in your own way. Oh God, thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I intended to do it a long time ago. I waited too long, Lord. Is this, is it over? Oh God, open your arms of love and receive me something in my heart, begging for it, Lord. Open once more if my book was in Lamb's, if my name was in Lamb's book. Speak to me now, Lord. Let me receive it right now. Please do, God.
coming home, coming home. Oh, let me never, I never, no more, Lord, to more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love. Oh, Lord, I'm coming home. The Bible said, when they recognize Jesus, that each one will weep like their only son being killed coming home. You outside, you in your cars by shortwave, you that standing around the building, many of you just lean your head against the building and say, Lord God, be merciful to me, open. Be dying sincere, friends. Think what time we are living. Where are we at? Love. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home. Oh, Lord Jesus, I have done the best that I know how. I have done all that I know how. Grant, Lord, that the mercy doors are still open. Oh, there's hundreds, literally hundreds, taken there at this time. Take away every sinful blot, Lord, and take them in today. I plead with all my heart. As you see, not only somebody talking, but the scriptures itself bringing us to this hour and that vision of a little boy seeing those people in that condition. And now think that hell itself, mercy, has been brought out from the earth and now hell itself is here and the people, Lord, are in this hideous condition. Oh, mighty God, on this letter chart, I pray, God, that you'll pour out your blessings that they might receive a ministry of testimony like Lot had, like Noah had, like Jesus had, and the eternal lost, if it be there that they only themselves are sealed into the kingdom of God, but giving witness to Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever. Grant it, Lord, may you receive our petition as you plead in Jesus' name. Just pray the way you want to pray. Don't be in no hurry. Don't be in no hurry. What if? You are the last name to go in the book. I'm coming home, coming home, coming home. Brother Neville, you go up and pray for them. The pastor is going to pray now with you are standing while you are praying as saying, Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home. Never more to roam. Yes, Lord. Open wide thine arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Oh, open wide thine arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. But I never continue praying, and may each one, Lord, satisfy this day that thou, being Almighty God, may this be the extension of mercy. Let it be unto each one individually. Grant it, Lord. Let it be now, Father, and let the peace of God that has always passed understanding, let it come again to waiting hearts. Yes, Lord, let this be the hour. Yes, we believe that you have heard from heaven. Ground, grant it. Whatever is in store for us, if it be over, then, Lord, we know what the final is. Yes, Lord, but... If not, let the witness come. Yes, Lord, let these that have come, let them find peace this day. Grant it, Lord, to Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll save Becky and Sarah and Joseph and them too, Lord. Don't let this happen to my children, Lord. Don't let it happen to my brothers and my friends. Grant it, Lord. We don't know. We don't know. But we are seeing something, Lord. It is a shaking sign right now before us. Grant it, Lord. Draw us all close to you quickly, Lord. We love you and we need you. Let it be, Father, that the Holy Spirit give us comfort in our hearts now. We pray that we might be witnesses to you in this hour. For we know this has got to happen. It's been predicted through the ages. And we must face it that we are at the end time. When we see these signs appearing, we know that we have been told for many years now that this thing shall take place. Now we see it right in our door. Great mighty wrath of God moving through the streets, taking out the uncircumcised. Where there is no blood on the door, the death angel visits. And they go on living, but dead while they're living. 
without mercy, without God, and can never be saved. God, how we thank you for these who are saved. How we, what a great blessing it is to our hearts to be on the inside now, under the blood, while the last angel passes through the land, taking out the, the ones out from under the blood that died without mercy. That was Moses' last pull. First, a young man talking to Israel. Second, went down to deliver them. Third was the last message. The miracles had been done. Moses was in his road to the promised land with the redeemed. Oh, God, be merciful, I pray in Jesus' name. Now I'd like to ask this. You who are praying, you who feel that you have mercy and that God, you feel that you are in the kingdom of God, you feel that you have been anchored somehow or another, that in Christ you have faith to believe that you are a Christian and you are born again and you know that you are a Christian and without doubt I wish to you will all stand up you that want that believes that 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 mercy has been extended to you now and you are Christians and uh, you believe that that blood is applied to your heart and that your sins are every forgiven of every sin this was a hard thing to speak to you people I'm so thankful and see the people up from everywhere and now I saw, I don't know that this thing is true, but I've got to be that way sometime, see, but it's got to be that way, and it could be now, see, in every way the world will carry right on, people will still come to the altar, they'll still cry out, but it won't do no good, see, they'll be gone, see, it will be over. There won't be no mercy, remember that, and the sanctuary becomes smoky. He that's filthy is filthy still. He that's righteous is righteous still. And he that's holy is holy still. There is no more mercy when the Lamb takes the book. That's it. That's all of it. And it looks a whole lot like it could be now. Maybe we may have another day. Maybe today is the last day. Maybe tomorrow is the last. Maybe tonight is the last. Maybe this is the last year. I don't know, friends, I'm telling you, I don't know, it never told me, but when God takes that last name and retains it from the book of life, that's all of it, see, there can't be no more anyhow, there can't be no more anyhow, that's all, it's finished, how many knows it's the truth, all right, it's the truth now that we do feel, and I see this congregation that I've preached to and warned all these years, and I see the message that like this, that I, that I wrote this in this amateur form. And uh, just remember, I say it so that you'll understand it amateur form. And some more things could almost shook you all to pieces, see? But I just omitted it, failed to do it, because I'm not sure. If I'm not sure where they're trading, I'll trade easy. But just telling you, listen, aren't you happy? Will there be another greater that you could think of, but you have done in your life? And what if this is over now? What if it's all done? Oh, you say, but run, maybe. Yeah, I know they could go right on. They did each time. I've explained that and proved it by the scripture. See, the world continued rolling right on. But what? It was done, see? The foolishness of preaching saves the lost. And it's foolishness to men. It's the wisdom of God, see? God is a spirit. He works in spiritual ways, see? He's wonders to perform wondrous ways. But we are in human. We are finite. We don't know. Just We just look upon what we see. But something within us when you walk out of that room there, if you ever have had it in your life, never had seen daylight, you would know that you are passed from this room here into a sunlight or something. It was warm. You could feel it. If there is no sense in your body to declare it, you know how. Oh, no sense of sight to see it. No way to see the green trees, to see nature. You don't, didn't have any sight. Nobody ever had it. You would know you 
would be in the presence of something, a feeling would tell you that you would know that if I'd tell you it's a sun that reflects, it shows things seen, you would know that it was there because you could feel it with your feelings. Is that right now? We know that Christ is here. See, maybe you don't see him with your eyes. See, maybe you don't. But through vision, I tell you, he's here. We feel it. We know that there's something here that our senses doesn't declare. It's a spirit declares it that Christ is here. I feel that he has redeemed us. I feel that our names are on his book. I believe that you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I love you and I know you love one another. Oh, blessed be ye the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred mind is light to the at above. We should always feel that way to one another. See, we must, we must feel that way to one another. See, because as we love one another, we love God. Can you hate your brother and who you have seen and say you love God who you have not seen? We must love each other. Greater love has no man than he that laid down his life for his enemy, that they might become his friends. Oh, do you know that song? Blessed be the tie that binds. Isn't it wonderful? Blessed be the ties. Would you give us a part of that, sister? Then just let it play a minute. What if it's over? What if the third goal coming up now is to preach to the lost? What if all the types are going to show forth now and we're in we're in wouldn't that be wonderful what a fellowship oh blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in here what does it our hearts in christian love the fellowship of kindred mind is light to the what was that fellowship of kindred minds the kingdom come thy will be done See, we try to make God a mascot boy, an errand or something. God, do this, do that. Jesus said, pray. The kingdom come will be done as it is in heaven. Then heaven is brought down to us. And we are, we are brought up to heaven and we are setting in heaven places now. In Christ Jesus, we all believe that message is to be the truth. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, redeems us. Let's close our eyes now and uh, raise our hands while we sing it. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind is like, keep playing it. Now, not one smile. This is not smiling time with a deepness of sincerity. But well, that song is a play. Let's shake hands with somebody by you. Say, God bless you, Christian, with sincerity. God bless you, Brother Neville. Brother Neville says, God bless you, Brother Branham. He's nine years old, that's right. A long way. God bless you, Brother. Well, let's raise our hands to him. While we are sound apart, it gives us in our pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. And uh, now let us bow our heads and together, not knowing what the future holds at this moment, not knowing, but what is over, I don't know, I can't say, I can't say, I don't know. But in the face of the facts that we have revealed this morning, let us pray the prayer the Lord told us to, even if it is, thy kingdom come, they will be done. Let us do it together. Our Father, we touch in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, they will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and forgive every, those who have trespassed against us and let us not temptation but leave us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen now with our hearts bowed the Bible said they sang a hymn and went out remember when they did that in the scripture, it was because they had crucified the ministry of our Lord, the second pool, and the third pool was ready to enter a few hours after that. He ascended into hell and preached to the lost that had rejected their mercy. A cord of my faith looks up to thee. 
my faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Saviour divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my sins away, no let me from this day be holy thine. While life's dark maze I tread, and griefs around me spread, be thou my guide, be darkness turn to day, wash sorrows fears away, O oh, let me from this day be holy thine. The Lord bless you, make his son and his grace will shine upon you, and the Lord give you eternal life and be with you here in this world and the world that's coming after, and life eternal. May you serve him all through the anions of time that is to come. Yeah, this is the time, and we have arrived at that place. I am not ashamed of what I have preached, and if each minister has, has to stand with his congregation and be judged, as I saw in the vision, I'm thankful for the gospel that I have preached, because it's the same gospel that Paul and them preached. I'm happy for you. I am happy that you have received Christ as your Savior. Love him and free. I'll see you this afternoon, the Lord willing, at 7 o'clock here at the church. God bless you. You are dismissed.